our input input handling system isn't quite up to scratch in the PC version, so we wanted to make a little fix. If you look at the game, we have our character here in the center. You can't really see him because you're sort of seeing him from the side, but you can sort of see his head bobbing up and down if we zoom in a little bit. That's our character. So we want him to jump around in a cool way. So right now he's just sort of jumping, not quite high enough, depends on how you time it. Um, the frame rate is also a bit choppy because of the camera recording. But what we want him to do is actually be able to glide up at an even rate. So I see I have to keep pressing the up button, which is the jump key. And sometimes that doesn't even work. So that input mechanic error is, is not very good at all. It could use a lot of work. So right now, all that it does is it applies a single impulse using an envelope. So there's a bit of easing on that impulse. Um, and the length of that depends on how long you hold the key down for, and it's clamped to a specific limit of time. So as you can see, it doesn't work very well because I'm just bouncing around all over the place. So let's close the simulator and see what we can do about it. Robots Can't Jump uses a specific method of handling input, which I call the composite input model, because multiple inputs can be applying physics forces and various other things can be happening at the same time. So hence the name composite. So that's CIM for short. The one we we're interested in is CIM booster, which is the one that applies a thrust along the y-axis to the character. So I'll give you a quick overview of the class. It's a very simple class. There's only ever one instance of it. It's attached to the player. It derives from input handler because it uses the virtual touch methods and because it's also an easy way to attach it to the input manager. It's a very straightforward class. Um, it doesn't have a lot of functions. The key one is the update, which is called every frame with a specific delta time. The other key thing about this class is that it has a mini state machine inside it. The states of the state machine are enumerated by this enumeration state. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of different states. The ones we're interested in are the ones at the bottom here. State boosting keyboard is the most interesting. If you read the description, it is the same as state boosting, but via the keyboard, different force calculation. So if you look at state boosting, that's when the player is holding the touch for extended boost. So what we want to do is to actually extend the boost without having to keep the user repeating the key. And also later on, we're going to clamp the linear, linear velocity in the physics engine so that you can't go too fast because if you go too fast in a physics engine, you break the physics engine and you can penetrate objects and it all gets a bit crazy. Let's have a quick look at the members of this very simple class. It obviously keeps track of its own state. These functions we're not going to look at today, but they handle multi-touch input uh, we'll look at them at another time. We're not concerned with them today because we're running on PC at this stage. This boost time elapsed is used, you'll see inside, it's basically used to keep track of how long you've held the key down. So we, we are going to end up using that. Um, these boost start and stop points and the current points are only motion inputs, are touch input specific, so we're going to look at them. And that's the reference to the player. So every component composite input method object needs to know where the player is to apply a forces to the rigid body. So let's flip to the CPP file. Once again, the structure is very simple. I'm just going to collapse everything so you can see it. Um, these are just the definitions of a function. The most interesting functions here are the constructor. We start out in state no touch, which if we go back to the documentation, it means that no touch has yet occurred. So that's our initial state. But then once we've initialized the object in the init function, all it does is it just adds it to the input input manager so it can have input messages translated into it and sent to it. The constructor removes it from the input handler. And let's look at update, which is the most important. We're not actually going to look at handle, touch down, move and up because they're not called on the PC version because it doesn't have touch input. Well, the mouse sort of simulates touch input, but it's a very poor analog, so we're not interested in that. Right now, we're only interested in what goes on in update, which is, as you can see, where we look at the keyboard every frame. To begin with, we have three constants, boost length, boost A, and boost B. Boost length currently boosts for a particular number of seconds, so 0.3 seconds, a very short boost every time you press the key. That's why you can see that effect where the player seems to jump up and then jumps up and then jumps up again, because I keep hitting the key. Um, however, if I hold the key down, nothing happens, because it only applies the boost once over a small period of time. Boost A is the point A on the boost curve, and boost B is the point B on the boost curve, and I use easing to go from point from value A to value B here over a specific curve. The curve I'm using is a quintic Bezier curve, so that's quite a, quite a steeply sloping curve, which gives a nice easing motion. Let's look at the state machine. 
we start out in state no touch and every frame we're going to be hitting this function and, and if we're in that state which is the first state we're going to ask the keyboard part of the marmalade api and we're going to say hey is the key down that i'm looking for and the one we're looking for at the moment is either up or numpad eight which is also up on some keyboards which is for completeness in fact it's the one that i like to use and if either of those keys is down at, at this frame we're going to start boosting but only if the weapons quadrant wasn't touched so that that comment is actually old the weapons quadrant is now gone so what we should actually be saying is but only if the weapon isn't being aimed because you can aim the weapon at the same time on a mobile device so actually this branch won't be called at all on a mobile device because the keyboard never does anything on the mobile device so this is probably redundant but anyway um, that check is just done over there we can probably remove that later on so what we now want to do is just get rid of that and we'll probably leave the little trace message in there just for our own purposes does that ever yeah we need to leave in the carriage return as well otherwise it will cluster up with the other lines which is not good so we don't actually need that check so as soon as it detects any of these keys are down we're going to switch into the state boosting keyboard state the time elapsed is set to zero and we compute a force at the beginning of the Bezier curve so we don't just set the force to either A or B um, because of the way the Bezier works it's better to actually compute it right from the beginning so the Quintic Bezier just takes the input of a value A, a value B and a value between and an interpolated value from 0 to 1 so we just go or actually in this case it's a time value so you can use whatever you want basically um, the algorithm is very flexible and then once we have that force, which is our initial force on the first frame, we apply it to the player's rigid body, which is his physics body. The force is changed slightly. Um, we get a sort of a raw force here, that, which is just essentially a one-dimensional vector. And what we want to do is we actually want to change it and move it into the right space. And we also want to invert the um, Quintic Bezier easing. That's why we do this funny thing here, minus brackets boost B minus four. So effectively, it just transforms it into the right space for us, and it gives us the right shape curve. We don't apply it at any particular vector. We just apply it at the center of the rigid body of the player. So if you wanted to apply something at the corner of the player, like a rocket hitting him, that's where you would apply it. But we don't do that in this case. So on the next frame, we're going to come back into update, and our state is now going to be state boosting keyboard. And it's going to stay here until the key, the up key or the numpad A key are released, which is what we do in this line. So as soon as either of these two keys are released, this block of code is going to say, okay, we're not in that piece of code anymore. We're not in that state. Let's go back to no touch. And the, this force is not going to be applied. But if those keys are down, which is what the else is for, we're actually going to add a small, the current time slice, the current DT for this frame onto boost time elapsed. And as long as that is smaller than our maximum boost length, which as you recall is a very small number, 0.3 seconds, a third of a second, we're going to keep applying that force. But the, the trick here is that we're actually applying a curved force, which happens over time. So we have a, an envelope that we're using to apply this force. So the force is actually being applied a number of times and we're actually applying a lot of small forces. So you almost get like this ramping force, which gives you a really nice smooth motion when you only have a one or zero coming from the keyboard. We're effectively smoothing the keyboard input. And once again, it's the same formula that gives us the final transformed force in that one dimensional vector that we're applying to the Y axis, which is up in our game world, as you, as you no doubt saw when we were playing the game. So that's really simple. I mean, um, it's actually going to keep applying it, but the problem which some of the more perceptive viewers may have already seen is that once we reach the boost length, the force is simply no longer applied and that kind of sucks so the first thing I want to change here is to actually remove the boost length and instead of doing that what I want to do is actually just clamp the body's linear velocity so we're going to get rid of that and we won't need boost time elapsed either that's only going to be used for the motion input on the touch device like the iPhone so we can actually get we'll just check that it's not used anywhere else I don't believe it is no Okay, it's not used anywhere else. I can just tidy up the formatting a little bit here as well. Play along, there we go. So we're still going to use boost A and boost B because these are valuable little constants that we can use to tune our amount of force. Now you'll notice we have a, a little bit of a problem here. 
which is that boost length was used in the Quintic Bezier calculation. So we're going to have to have a quick look and figure out how we can solve that. Actually, we, we should retain boost length. What we should do is we should use boost length only for the first part of a boost and not to maintain the force. So once the force is at a certain level, we can assume it's no longer using it. So we'll put that back. So we'll use it for this computation. We're, we're still not going to use the um, variable, other variable we deleted, which was the um, boost time elapsed. That's still using the touch stuff, so we won't delete it entirely. But when it comes to this part, what we're actually going to do is ask it, you know, what what kind of force do we still need to apply at this time? And that's all fine because the Quintic Bezier will always, you know, once it reaches the boost length, it will always return the same value. So it's not going to get any higher. It will just sort of even out. So let's give that a quick try and see if it does what we expect. We'll just go back into debug. Uh, 